Hello, welcome to my second live streaming for today. It's the 29th of January 2020 on Wednesday. So, how are you doing? Alright, so first of all, uh, welcome to my live session. And yeah, Muchino-san, welcome to my Ichimoku membership. Welcome and stay gold, Muchino. Alright, alright. And Arkady, thanks for joining as always. And Melanie, thanks for joining. Christoph. All right, Kendo Triple Seven, Aeon, thanks for joining. All right, Dewey, welcome, welcome back. All right, all right, it's great, it's great. So, how's your day today? It's Wednesday. It's in the middle of the week today. So, I was actually checking up some uh, chart before I open up this uh, live streaming here. So, looks like it's been a uh, little bit slow today. There is not much of movement. Um, I think it's going to be volatile a bit uh, later part uh, for today, but we'll see. We'll see what, what what might happen today. So, yep. Oh, and also, if you're new to my Forex live streaming, uh, I have a question form like this. Um, there's a question form for Ichimoku Kinko Hyo, and so whenever you have any questions. You can just send me any questions about Ichimoku. Uh, the link is on the down uh, on the description down below, so that you can just click the link and open this form, so that you can send me any questions about Ichimoku. All right. Okay. So let's see. Let's see what's happening on the market right now. All right. Is everybody trading today? Or this week, the market is relatively slow this week. So, yeah, and pretty much there is no direction. So it's been quite difficult for me to take trades. So I am more taking my own time to uh, create the you know the ebook and also community like this, and also preparing for the live streams like this or doing other things. Basically, I'm. Spending much time on myself uh, than trading this month, and usually, right? Usually in January, um, the volatility is a little bit less. So, yeah, maybe February or later February or March, I will be serious on trades. But this month is very slow, usually for me. All right. Hi, Oji-san USA. Thanks for joining. All right, Caleb. Konbanwa. Konbanwa. All right. You got some Japanese there. All right. Hi, Son. Thanks for joining. Godly. All right. Leo. Josh B. Thanks for joining. All right. All right. All right. Mateo Wilson. Thanks for joining. All right. Georgian. Thanks for joining. All right. Harman. Welcome back. All right. Alejandro. Thanks for joining. All right. What about your dog? <laughs> Is he moving to Dubai too? Yes. Yes. He is moving to Dubai. Yes, exactly. So yeah, there I have to do lots of paperwork for him too, and also the injections too. So yeah, I am preparing for it. Yep. So I think uh, yeah, I've I've seen few Shiba dogs uh, in Dubai. So I am looking forward to meeting meeting the you know the owner of Shiba dog because I think it's very. Um, yeah, very rare to find Shiba dog in Dubai because <laughs> it's a, it's a Japanese dog. So yeah, all right. But next month in February is just a visit for about ten days. I will be visiting Dubai and just look around, and I will go to some grocery stores, and also I will be. Uh, going to the apartment. Actually, I know where I want to live already, so I will be just looking at some rooms on, within that building. It's a tall one in Dubai, so I will be going uh, looking around some uh, rooms within that building. And I have already booked a schedule with the real estate agents too. So, yeah, so excited. All right, hi Arkadi. Thanks for joining. All right, yes, uh, WIT, WTI is volatile. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, all right. Hi, Jaren. Thanks for joining. All right. And Gabriel, thanks for joining as well. 
All right. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. I was just looking at the gold right now. And yeah, gold is basically horizontal, right? This is like no direction. But I just found something interesting. So I just wanted to share it with you today. Um, and yeah, it's not something that we can do anything right now. But uh, I was looking at the time cycle in this uh, daily chart of gold. So let's just place gold daily. And um, yeah, there is uh, 13 intervals here on this daily chart. So if you take this high, hold on, if you take this candlestick right here, and I will just mark it here with a vertical line. And also if you go back to this big, big pin bar pointing upwards right here, um, if you count the numbers of the candles between in between this is 13 bars right 13 bars so it was a v wave right uh it was a v wave for this uh within the 13 bars and the market is going down right now so yeah it could be a reverse n wave and in that case it can break the recent low downwards right can break the recent low downwards and keep extending towards the downside and depending on the calculation you will get the possible potential target uh, uh, price here or you know uh, e, e calculation and v calculation and or nt calculation you get the target but the point is that the 13 interval is very important on this gold so i think this is something that you want might want to uh, remember and going backwards from this pin bar right uh, if you go back 13 bars even it's going to be on this candlestick right here on this uh, doji candle a uh, very small one so this was 13 candles and if you go back 13 candles even before it's going to be <coughs> on this candlestick right here so this was not really uh, very low right this one was not really very low but if you go back even 13 candles before it's going to be on this candlestick on this uh, recent lowest uh, the previous lowest price this one so 13 bars 13 bars and if you go even backwards 13 candlestick from here it's going to be on this one right this is yeah this is like a 12 bars but very close to the 13 bars so it's been a cycle of this uh, 13 candlestick days right and this one and this one so when you find this kind of pattern what you have to remember is that on the next 13 bars something might happen <laughs> yeah it's like the prediction but um, you can check the movement for the next 13 bars like this right and i plot the vertical line like this and when the candlestick reaches to this vertical line on this one then on the market first of all right the expectation will be uh it might reach to it might break the recent low here and break it downwards and continue to be going down like this right Th this might be one of the a scenario uh, and also it might retrace 100 percent to this price level this is another hypothesis here and also another one might be uh it's going down right now but it might push back up and it might go up to this 100 percent level right to to the recent high it might reach to this recent high or it might move all the way up to the certain target level so yeah on this one right here is very significant for me because uh, it's been a th cycle of the 13 candlestick days so yeah um, this is a pattern on this gold daily chart right now so yeah we will see what might happen on this uh, vertical line here 
So yeah, that's my observation right here. So yeah, whenever you try to look for these vertical lines for time theories, um, you need to first take the very high or very low and you start to count going backwards or forwards and you start to count the interval to the next high or next low. And sometimes you find a pattern like this, right? Like the exact same intervals like this. And when you find this, this is like a breadth of the market right now. So yeah, in gold daily chart, it's been 13 day cycle. And right now, yeah, so before it was mar marking this uh, recent high here, the price might be coming all the way down to the recent low, first of all, or it might break the recent low to even lower level. Um, or it might retrace backwards to the recent high, which is around this price level, or it might go up further to this level. Um, so yeah, um, I think within the 13 days or right now two days already passed so within this uh, 11 trading days i think uh the market might be breaking this recent high or low downwards and that's my first observation here so the recent low is here and the recent high level is here somewhere hold on let me just make sure yeah it, it's right at the tip of the candle right here so this was a recent high and this was a recent low level and I am ex expecting the price to be breaking either high or low up or downwards within next uh, 11 candlestick days so yeah we will see we will see I will just leave this line as a dotted line so that we can all observe what might happen uh, at this price level at, at this time so I will delete all other lines so yeah uh, and even when you go back 13 days from this one if you go back 13 days backwards it's going to be around this candlestick right so there was a, there was a previous high here so yeah, this is like uh, they're very close to the 13 candles. So yeah, it might be significant. It might be significant in that sense. All right. So yeah, whenever you start to count, you on, you j just start to count from this this a remarkable high or a remarkable low, and try to check the intervals. Right. You you can take this one or this one too. All right. Okay. Hi, DTR. Thanks for joining. All right. All right. Short opportunity in Euro data now. Okay. Okay. All right. It's going down now. Okay. I'm trying to find how to know the point of reversal by looking at cloud Ichimoku from multiple time frame and enter by the close a uh, closer cut loss. Please teach us using gold chart. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, right now gold is not really moving up or down, so I cannot really capture the exact buy chance. But when it's in the trend, it's more obvious, it's more obvious. So, and yeah, the trend trend market should come anytime, right, anytime. So at that time, I will be showing it. But right now, it's really difficult. First of all, it's really difficult to catch the reversal point when it's in the range or when when the market does not have any direction. It's very difficult. So, yeah, uh, maybe this might be not really a good, great example to show you, like like the uh, the reversal points by Ichimoku. Or yeah, I can take a look at the lower time frames and try to capture the potential reversal in any time sure all right we're also nearing the 17 day cycle from the recent high yeah yeah 
seventy high, seventeen day cycle, right? Okay, okay. All right. When weekly and daily charts confirm a trend, as and sim smaller time frames like one hour, four hour confirm the moment. How do you time your entry in five minute chart? Yep, that's what I have been trying to teach <laughs> here on this live, and this is my method, right? This is my uh, strategy. Every time I take trade, I look at multiple time frames and capture the exact uh, trading edge on the market. So basically, you have to follow the bigger time frame. Like when weekly is moving up, then you have to look for the buy chance. And when, for example, daily chart is moving down, then you have to look for the sell chance by looking at the lower time frames. Hi, Manan. Thanks for joining. Oh, Maru san. Hi. Thank you for joining as a Ichimoku member. All right. Stay gold, Maru. All right. All right. And yeah, I just realized that you have a Shiba dog picture. So yeah, we ha we are Shiba friends. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining Ichimoku community. Stay gold, Maru. Stay gold. All right. So yeah, right now, let's see. On this daily chart, in this daily chart, right now there's no direction right so let's check out one hour and yeah right now it's it doesn't show the trend either right it doesn't move like up or down in this time right now so this is not really a good one to take trade right now i wouldn't touch on this one just in case looking at the five um yeah in this five minute chart too the kumo is horizontal so yeah, it was moving up, but right now it's becoming horizontal and there's no direction in the market. So, yeah, um, I won't touch on this one. All right. Okay, so yeah, by the way, I was trading pound JP earlier. I was buying it, but because the price has been coming back, I just got lost. I just got lost. A very minimum, though. It was like uh, five pips of loss. So yeah, I was expecting the market to be keep going down, going up, and that's why I was buying it at this price level, right at this this price level right here. But because the price broke this recent low downwards, I just got the loss immediately here. So this is how I cut loss, right? Every time I cut loss, I do it very very quick, very quick. So this was only about uh, five pips, five or six pips of loss. And I am looking for another buy chance right now. But right now, um, the market is going down. So I am not really positive on buying it right now. So before, when I was here, I was, like I said yesterday, I was looking at these three lows here, three triple bottom here. And that's why I bought it. Here. I was a little bit late, but I bought it here last night and I was holding the position and the market kept going up as a result and now today it's coming all the way back down and yeah, I was I just got the loss when the market actually broke this recent low downwards <laughs> Yeah, so that that was a scenario, but it happens it happens. So whenever I cut the loss I do it very quick I mean, uh, my risk is always very minimum. Even even though I place the stop loss slightly below these lows, it doesn't it doesn't mean that I will keep holding the loss until the price hits this level. Right? I will cut loss as soon as the price breaks this recent low downwards, with like f five or six pips of loss. So that way, um, you know, I have. I can save up my my money, and also I can uh, you know judge things correctly and objectively. Because um, if I were to holding the sell position still, uh, right now it's break even, so it's okay. But if the price keeps going down like this way, then I will be thinking if I will be you know still holding the sell position or not, and I will be losing the logic behind. And that means I already lost a chance to cut loss. So whenever 
you cut loss, you have to follow your own strategy too. And that's the most difficult part, but that's also a very interesting part about, the, about this uh, Forex market. So yeah, right now it's coming back up, so it's all right, but you, you never know, right? You never know because this was a support zone, so the price could have been keep going down. And in that case, you will be maybe placing another sell or another buy, right? Or you, you might pyramid or you might uh, look at other charts and look for another trading chance without any strategies to actually win back the loss and that's a, that's a worst habit that you could ever have so you better avoid um, you know um, winning back or keep extending the loss right is not really the way the pro traders should be so yeah my rule is that I will cut loss immediately as, as soon as the price breaks the recent low or the position downwards, I will cut loss because I am buying here because of the reason, right? I, I was buying here because I saw this triple bottom and also there was a, 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 yeah, some uh, range here and the, the market was moving up and down here and at that time the Kumo was moving up, Senko Span B was moving up and that's why I placed a buy. Yeah, at that time I was actually looking at the 5 minute chart and 15 minute chart and took a buy here, but there was a reason, right? There was a reason to buy and that means if the price keeps going up and down immediately, then I was wrong, right? I was wrong on my analysis, so I have to admit the fact that, that I was wrong and I have to cut the loss immediately. Yeah, and so to do this, it takes time, I guess, and it it takes it takes courage. It takes courage to cut loss because no one wants to make loss, right? Everyone wants to make profit. No one is here to make loss, but it happens sometimes on the market, and I think this is a very very important uh, psychology here. And I do this. I cut loss immediately because. Uh, over time, I, I tend to extend the loss and it's, it becomes very, very difficult to win back the loss. And that's why, uh, and also psychologically and emotionally, I get very frustrated and I, I become uh, hating the Forex market. So yeah, that's why I decided to cut loss immediately and that works for me too. So yeah, I, th I think uh, you know, it works for you too. All right. Hi, Maru-san. Yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> What's his name? Yeah, his name is Vice. W-E-I-S, Vice. And that's, that means uh, white in German. Because he's a white Shiba dog. So I named him Vice because it's in Germany and sound just sound, you know, interesting and cool. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Okay, okay. Matewes, all right. I hope I can say we are also Polish. Uh, sense around. Okay. Friends. <laughs> sure, sure. We are dog friends. Dog friends. All right. Matewes, you have a dog too. That's great. That's great. Okay. Is it possible to make the inner screen a little bigger in print size? Oh, inner screen, you mean uh, this one? Yeah, I will try to make it bigger. But this is the maximum screen size. Alright, yeah, I will try to Im improve it sometime later. Alright. Hi, Lakshai, thanks for joining. Alright, alright. Can you analyze his pound CHF? Um, I don't really look at it, so yeah, when I have time, I do. So you jump off the losing position on or after it breaks the recent low, you will wait for the retracement and close. 
I usually jump off the losing position. Right? I won't wait for the retracement or not. I just jump off the position if I'm losing. So yeah, in this case, um, yeah, because my expectation is that the price will be keep going up and the price won't come back to my entry price. And that's why as soon as the price goes back down, I cut loss. Right? I won't wait for the retracement. Hi Woj, thank you for joining. Hello, hello, all right. Hi Hicham, thanks for joining too. All right. I saw you have some profit about risk reward one to one. Why don't you trading stop to protect the reward? Yeah, I could have been, but I was sleeping actually, so I I didn't place the stop loss to the break even. Yeah, when I was running a profit, I was basically sleeping here. I was in the midnight in Japan, so I never knew that it was going up. And usually, I don't um, enable the trading stop because um, I have tried uh, several a uh, couple of trades before with the trading stop, and sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't work. I, uh, cut, you know, I cut loss immediately, so. Yeah, I usually trail the trail the profit manually. I move the stop loss manually, gradually. So yeah. So in this case, it's just you know five or six profit, pro, five or six pro, pips of loss. So it's okay. All right. So yeah, this is the very the very important lesson here today how to cut the loss because usually traders tend to extend the loss you know expecting to for the price to be keep going up and yeah but sometimes it doesn't work that way because you will be frustrated emotionally you will be um, you know frustrated and you will be you know worried and with that mental state you cannot make a correct decision so you better exit as soon as possible hi k what ichimoku indicator do you use i hate mt4 stock one uh i this is mt5 this is mt5 and that's why kumo looks like the real kumo here yeah in mt4 yeah it doesn't look like this one right yeah you know that and MT4 is not really no more supported, right? By the by the original creator, MT4. MT5 is now supported, and that's why I'm using MT5 because this is more secured one. So whenever any errors happens on this MT5, I can always escalate it to the MetaTrader. But MT4 is no more supported, so I think it's dangerous to keep using MT4. Hi, senior. Thanks for joining. All right. Hi, Isabella. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. <laughs> Hi, Frazon. Thank you for joining as well. All right. When did you start trading? Can you tell us about your losses? Just want to know your background. I have a profile on the description below when you come to the description i have a i have a whole list of my profile so you can check that one uh, recently i re-edited and it's very long <laughs> it's very long i never imagined myself that it's going to be that long but um yeah it's just that long so you can just come to my web page yeah because i i hear some you know comments and questions you know what is my background? How, how I have been doing on my trades? So this is my website, and if you click this one, I'll check more profile. Right? If you click on this one, hold on. Let me see if this is displayed right. Yeah.
All right. It's taking a little bit time here. And sometimes maybe I will be talking about myself, my own profile on live. That will be interesting to share my experience and thoughts and my background to you. And yeah, this is my profile right now. So yeah, you can see a whole, whole list of my profile here. And I see, yeah, I put why I trade it. And this is my overall um, history, year to year history here of these numbers. And also, um, so yeah, last year I was doing uh, better than 2018. And I'm sure I will be doing better on this year too. And yeah, and I see, right, I have a whole list of the profile here. So you can just visit here whenever you have any time and just enjoy my profile. Um, yeah, the content is like this much, right? It, I think it's halfway, it's cut in half, right? Because there's a, there's a chat box and myself on the screen. But if you come to my profile page, you can see a whole list of this, you know, the contents here. It's long, it's very long. <laughs> so yeah, you can always enjoy here, right? Okay. Hi, Wasan. Thank you for joining. All right. <laughs> no auto word again. What indication do you use as a stop loss, Kijun? It was the recent low. Recent low. So. Yeah, and this time I I didn't look at the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo to, to 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 take the stop. I just took the stop. I just took the loss because just because the price broke my entry price downwards. This was my entry price, right? And just because the price broke my entry price downwards, I took took the loss. Because my expectation was usually uh, usually when the price keeps going up, it does, it does. But when it goes backwards or when the price breaks the position downwards, then there must be something wrong. So I have to quit trading. I have to, you know, um, just, you know, um, give up all the positions and I have to be objective to the market again to be able to analyze the market correctly. And that's why I like to, um, take some pro some people of loss and I want to come back to the chart that way. All right. Hi Raymond, thanks for joining. All right. Yeah, yeah. Travel connecting, sure, sure, all right. Welcome, welcome to my life, Raymond, as always. Hi, Lakshai. <laughs> Very intelligent guy. Glad to hear that, glad to hear that. Okay, so anyways, right now, uh, the price is coming back up. So if the price comes back to this level again, then I might take buy, another buy. Or, and I would wait until the price, the Kumo to be twisted to the upside and I will be taking buy. So anyways, right now, just because the price is breaking this uh, recent high or low uppers, uh, I, I cannot take buy at this moment because um, there's no confirmation, right? It might be reverse end wave, you know, it might be reverse end wave like this and the price may keep going down, so we never know, right? It was a consecutive like one and two end wave creation in the middle. So yeah, after the range breakout, this was the case. So yeah, right now the price is being resisted because there were a previous supports here. So we'll see if the price is going to be resisted here or not. 
So yeah, another scenario might be if the price keeps going up, then it might be pushing back up somewhere and the price might um, penetrate this uh, thin part of the Kumo upwards here. This might be another scenario. And yeah, we'll see. There is a line. I can draw a line like this, descending trend line. So yeah, I can also wait for the price to be breaking this descending trend line upwards here. This might be another buy point. But overall, I am still looking for a buy chance. Or the price might be breaking this you know, line right upwards too. It might keep going up and break this line upwards too because there was a former resistance here, rejections and supports here a couple of times. And so this, this line should work too. So yeah, looks like right now it's just, you know, moving anything. Like it's just, just going up and down within the range. Okay. All right. So yeah, let's see. Let's see. So let's check out. Let's just go back to daily chart again on this pound JP and see what we can find here. All right. So on this pound JP On this daily chart, looks like the market is breaking this Kumo downwards or it's going to be breaking this Kumo anytime. Uh, when it moves horizontal, it's, it's going to break it too, right? So yeah, uh, when the price breaks this Kumo or the Senko Span B downwards or horizontal, um, that means that there's really no direction in the market. Right now, it's losing the direction because Kumo is being flat right now. So yeah, there is no direction basically. Um, yeah, like I mentioned before, there was a trend line like this and there was a descending line like this way or this way. So yeah, this is still in the range, in, in the P range here, right? The P range. So yeah, and so looks like it might be breaking this uh, trend line downwards. So yeah, I think I really better stop trading on this one or looking for a buy chance on this one because the price just broke this trend line downwards and it's heading towards the Senko Span B now. Yeah. Let's see. Thank you, K. I will practice cut loss like your way. Yeah, sure, sure. So, oh yeah, Hamidi san, thank you for joining, Hamidi san. All right. So, yeah, uh, this is my strategy because I am basically a trend follower. And when I'm on profit, I will try to extend the profit as much as possible. But when I cut loss, I do it immediately. I cut loss in like 10 or, uh, 10 or 15 pips or 10, 20 pips at most. But this time it was a cut loss of uh, 5 or six, 6 pips only. And yeah, usually I do that. Because uh, if you start to extend the loss, then uh, your overall history right your, your overall uh, winning rate might be a little bit worse and also your overall trading results might be a little bit less less so you better cut loss immediately so that you can also be objective to the market anytime so yeah this is one hour chart on pound yen so i will sorry i will just switch it to pound yen yeah, 
so right now the Kumo is going down and single span B uh, just turn into the bearish so yeah by following this one hour chart a sell might be the better call right sell might be the better call so I might be thinking to sell for now because before when I was watching when I was watching the market on at this right at this point right here the single span B was flat but right now single span B is moving down right so clearly the market has changed on this one hour chart so if the if the single span B was flat still then I might be thinking about buying it but because single span B is going down right now on this one hour chart I wouldn't take buy and looks like it's been it's going to be sub, uh, resisted by this single span A here because Kumo is a little bit thicker here right it's a little bit thick part it's got the thickness to it so there are chances that the price might be resisted by this single span A here the lower part of the Kumo so that's something that we have to watch out so yeah we'll see we'll see okay looks like pound JP returning yeah upside looks like so yeah but uh, considering of the brexit it should be going up uh, after the result pound I think the pound is going to be um, going up and that's why I was looking for a buy chance but at this stage right now I don't see any buy chance because single span B is moving down and also Kumo itself is getting very thin right it's getting thinner and thinner here very thin so yeah the market is losing its momentum plus single span B is moving down and that's why the market is likely to be keep going down this way and yeah looks like the Kijun Sen Tenkan Sen uh, are going to be dead crossed anytime soon so that's something that I have to watch out too yeah and in this case Chikou Span does not really give me any signals because this is just inside the candles and it doesn't really mean at this time sometimes it resonates with that with the market sometimes it works as a resistance like here here right sometimes it works as a resistance and it pushes back down or up but this time it's in inside the candlestick right now so I don't think I don't think that this is significant here so yeah we'll see hi Kyo thanks for joining all right oh by the way everyone uh if you liked today's live streaming please press a good button all right okay and if you haven't sub subscribed please subscribe and hit the notice notification on so that um, you get notifications when I do the live streaming next time I do this every day so basically when you come every day you can watch my live stream but if you subscribe and hit the notification you get the automatic notification so that you don't have to keep checking my channel all right how many trades in a week do you take in the average also do you believe in trading less and making more money um, yeah it depending on the week this week was very slow to me so I didn't take any uh, I didn't take a much many many trades this week I just took four trades this week and that's it but usually I take five 
or 6 or up to 10 trades per week. When it's really volatile and especially when it's on a trend, I take trades actively. And yeah, trading less and making money, I think so, I think so. Yeah, um, when it comes to trading, um, you know, the, the number of taking trades is not really important. What's more important is how much you can extend the profit as long as possible. And yeah, how soon you can cut loss. So yeah, and also the trading edge is not really happening daily. Sometimes you have to wait for two or three days to capture the trading edge on the market. So and yeah, again, it really depends, right? Depending on the week and depending on the news on the market. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see. So yeah, looks like it's going up now. But again, this is slow, plus there's no direction in the market. So again, this is a very difficult to read, first of all. All right, let's just check out other pairs here. Let's see. All right, let's see. Let's check out one by one pound data. Let's see what's happening on pound data here. Mm, okay, it's like the same. It's like the same. This is one hour on pound USD. And looks like the market is going down right now, but yeah, right now it's going down. The single span B is moving down. And yeah, the Kumo is relatively thick here. So yeah, it looks like this one is the better one to take trade, to sell in this case. Yeah, just by checking out the daily chart, yeah, it's also looks like it's going, uh, going out of the Kumo here. Single span B break is about to be happening. Also, there's a triangle, right, like this. There's a triangle formation. It's going to break. Looks like it's being supported by this triangle. So, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. There's FOMC, so I think this pair is going to be impacted by that. And also the Brexit. So, yeah, if I don't have any positions on this pair, I wouldn't touch it. If I have running prop, running pips or profit of about uh, 100 pips or more, then I would be holding the position and just check out the FMC. But I don't have any positions right now. And before the big news, um, if you don't ha have any positions before the news, before the big news, you have to basically stay away. You have to keep watching the market. And you better come back to this pair next week. All right. Okay. Good quality trades, good quality wins. Exactly, exactly. That's true, Melanie. Yep. Do entry with buy, sell, sell stop and limit? Um, I don't do the limit uh, because I cannot really watch the market in that situation. I take trades manually and I prefer that.
Is it a coincidence that Brexit deadline is on the 31st of January, where the 33 time cycle in at for uh, pound JP? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think there is. There is a coincidence like that. Yep. And when that happens on the exactly 33 time cycle, then uh, yeah, most likely the market might be renewing, right? Might be renewing the recent high or low up or downwards. If that's a time cycle. All right. So yeah, right now on this pound US dollar, looks like this is still in the range on the triangle. So, and plus there's FMC and Brexit, so you better stay away from this one. And let's continue to look at the dollar yen. All right, USD JPY on um, daily chart. Yeah, looks like yeah, this is still in the range too, right? There is no trend in the market in this bigger time frame. So yeah, there is not really much to say at this time. The price can go either up or down, right? Can go either up or down because Chikou Span, sorry, um, Senko Span B is flat, Kumo is flat, and there is no direction basically. Yeah, the price looks to be. Uh, yeah, never mind, never mind. Yeah, the Kumo is actually not really working in this situation. So, yeah. Let's check out the other one Euro Pound. Euro Pound daily. Okay, this one is a little bit more interesting because uh, Kumo, the single span B is moving up right now. So, in terms of the trend, this is becoming uptrend. Um, yeah, Kumo is moving up. Kumo was moving up, but right now it's horizontal. And so we'll see if the price, the market is going to be supported by this level here. Right now the price is coming back down. So we'll see if the price is going to be supported by this single span A or this support line here. By the way, this is one hour chart on a pound, a euro pound. So yeah, right now Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen did cross, right? And also Chikou Span is interacting with the candles. So I would wait for the price to be breaking this recent high upwards, then look for the buy chance. So yeah, Euro Pound, I would still wait for the trading edge. At this time right now, I don't see any chance to buy or sell. Yeah, looks like all the markets are very limited in terms of the volatility because there's big news happening uh, this towards this week and week weekend. So it looks like the market is suspicious these days. All right. Even I use Ichimoku in my trading system, and I wanted to ask what that what's uh, the best way to take profit using Ichimoku only. I usually take profit when the price closes above the baseline. Um, yeah, if that's your strategy, then you have to follow it. You have to follow it because um, yeah, you, basically you can take any lines to take trades in Ichimoku. And I am a trader who is using Ichimoku and also other tools. So yeah, I look at the price actions too and also the lines too. And I trade based on what's working and I don't trade what's not working. So 
yeah, that's what that's way that's the way I usually look at the market. And this year, because I am exclusively talking about Ichimoku, I am thinking to trade only by Ichimoku, because uh, usually I take trades based on other tools like RSI Stochastics or Bollinger Bands, uh, you know, those kind of indicators. But this year, this is actually my another uh, my, my goal. But this year, I am thinking to take trades only using by Ichimoku. And that will be fun. That will be fun. I might create another account, of course, because this is my main account and I don't want to trade with Ichimoku only. But I will create another uh, my Forex account and in that I might be taking buy or sell just by looking at Ichimoku and also the theories, three theories. So yeah, and I will be, um, um, I will be open, I will be on, um, yeah, sharing, sharing the, sharing the result in a closed community. I'm sorry for asking too many questions. Oh, no worries, no worries. You can ask me many questions. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, so Kijun Sen is actually very nice to take trades if you're a newbie, or you can just take this Kumo to take trades. That would be nice. Or the combination of the Kumo and Kijun Sen is very good. So, yeah, because if you add more tools and you might get more confused if you don't know what's happening in the market and what these lines are telling you. So I think you better start with Kumo and Kijun Sen and take trades. Uh, you know, when by looking at these these angles of these these lines or Kumo, or by looking at this thickness of the Kumo or direction of the Kumo, you can take trades. And that will be more easier for uh, some of you. And then you can add Tenkan Sen and look for the crosses, right? Look for the crosses and um, check which cross is, uh, which cross works on the market and which cross does not work on the market, right? Things like that. You can um, backtest yourself and you can find those patterns in the market. Yep. All right. I'm long on Euro Pound. Okay, okay. All right. Euro Pound. Yeah, uh, if you're buying it, I think, yeah, uh, you better just follow the trend. Unless the price breaks this low downwards, you can keep following the trend for moving up. Yeah, that might be a case. Okay. All right. Yeah, unfortunately on this live chat, you cannot disclose the personal information. So yeah, and this is due to the YouTube policy. So yeah, sorry about that. Okay. All right, so let's see. Pound. Yeah, I think the pound is going to be bought, so I'm still looking for a chance to buy on the pound. But because there's no trend on the market, it's really difficult to catch the edge. All right, Euro JP here, one hour, right? It's going down right now. All right, Euro JPY. This is one of our chart, and it's going down right now. Um, yeah, again, this is like no direction. Basically, this is at the low lower level on the market, so buy might be a better call to expect the price to be supported on this level, and expect the price to be keep going up. But because single span B is flat, you cannot really be positive. For the for this support, um, yeah, buyers. If I see the market momentum, like uh, this is a Monday, right? There's a gap on Monday. 
And after the market opened on Monday, the market was gradually um, these um, lower highs here, right? Highs are getting lower here. So from this day right here, from until the candlestick breakout on this on this time right here, the market was bearish. But after this break, it went upwards, right? The market went upwards and renewed the recent high slightly upwards. So this is, I think, very significant because uh, it shows that the buyers are still there, right? Buyers are still there. So yeah, and the price is coming back down right now, all the way down here. So yeah, so that means because there are buyers on the market, this support might work. This support might work. So yeah, you can uh, take a look at even lower time frames like five. Let's just take a look at the five here. All right, spiking down. Looks like it's due to some news here. Um, yeah, it's going down. Broke the recent low here. So let's see if the candlestick will be closed with the pin bar pointing down here because there's a support here, right? And as, as time goes by, if the price is going to be supported, for example, like a uh, double bottom here or head and shoulders pattern or triple bottom here, then you can still be positive to buy at this price level. But right now, we have to wait for the candle close to make sure this is going to be a support. So like in this time, you, ha you don't have to jump into the market. You have to always wait for the confirmation to buy or sell. And it's very important. Ichimoku really gets you into in the trend and help filter quality trade. That's really good. Also helps me to uh, be disciplined. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, Ichimoku really taught me a lot, a lot. The philosophy itself, how to, you know, see the market, how you analyze the market is very profound in Ichimoku. Yeah, for pound JP, there was a pin bar in daily chart yesterday. How do you think about the signal? I think the price is retracing, then will go up according to that reversal pin bar. Yeah, let's take a look at the pin bar. All right, I will come back to this five minute on Euro JP later. And in the meantime, let's go back to the pound JP here and see if there's a pin bar in daily. All right, so let's just zoom in here. Oh, you mean a pin bar as this one, right? This one. So when you see a pin bar like this when the market is going down, right, this might be the signal of the reversal to the upside. But if it goes down, you have to wait for the breakout of this pin bar. In theory, in theory, so pin bar is shows that on this day, the market was not really moving up or down, right? The start price and close price is about the same, with some volatility within the day. So that means there are stop losses up here and down here. And usually, when the wick is pointing down and there is no wick pointing up, then Usually the market reverses to the upside, but this one the, there's a wick pointing upwards too, so that means, right on this day there was there were stop losses, up here and below here, right I can tell, and that's why you better wait for the breakout, to downside or upside, so in this case, uh, we never know which way, the price is going to be breaking, but one thing for sure is 
when it breaks out, it's going to be big. It's going to be a long uh, trend, looks like. Yeah. Yeah, there are pin bars, right? There are pin bars, like this one was a pin bar. This one was a, also a pin bar, right? This one was also a pin bar too. So, yeah, when you are actually seeing the pin bar right now, right next to the current candle, then this is how you think, right? There must be some stops, stops, right? Up or below this pin bar. So you have to wait for the breakout so that the price can move towards that direction by um, cutting the loss, right? Cutting the stop losses. So like these ones too, right? These ones, you, you can just draw the lines, right? You can just draw lines and whenever it's breaking out, the market is going towards that way, right? This one breaking, the market was breaking upwards and that's why it went up. This one was also breaking upwards and that's why it went up. And this one was also breaking upwards and the price was going up. And this one too. Well, this one was not really going up, right? It was moving down. But usually, right, usually when you see pin bars like this, um, the market usually moves towards its breaking out. Um, direction yeah <clears throat> so right now you better wait for the breakout of this pin bar because there is there are stop losses up and below on this candlestick because this is daily candlestick and within the day within that this day the market was moving up and down this much and that's why there are sellers and buyers this much right and that's why also there are stop losses above and below. And which way the market is going to be breaking, I'm not really sure. Because Kumo is horizontal again, right? Kumo is horizontal. Um, looks like right now it's it's been bearish, but we never know. We never know. It depends where where it occurs. It doesn't mean anything if not on a SR. Yeah, yeah. Where it happens is also important. Sometimes the pin bar can be a reversal signal. But when you see the pin bar in the middle of the trend, it usually follow the direction towards where it's breaking out. Yep. Pound CHF closed with a daily pin bar pattern yesterday as well. Okay, okay. So yeah, you better look for the you, you better look for the breakout on the pin bar or doji candle. Yeah. That's why it's a doji. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's a doji. Doji means at the same time in Japanese. So basically, um, you know, when you look at the doji like this, the price started the start price and the close price is about the same, right? About the doji price. And that's why this is called a doji candle. Well, technically, this one is more closer to doji, right? Because the body part is very tiny. This one's got a little bit of more body part, but this one's very tiny body part. And wicks are beautifully pointing up and down exactly on the same uh, length here. So this is a beautiful example of doji candle. And when you see this, you have to follow the breakout direction. It's a theory. It's a theory. <clears throat> okay, so let's come back to EuroJP again and see what we see here. EuroJP 5 minute chart. Okay, yeah, looks like it's it's uh yeah, it just broke right, just broke downwards and it's coming back up, but I don't still see any confirmation to buy yet. And yeah, if it goes down again, then maybe it's going to be a sell. Maybe it's going down. We'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> So 
So yeah, usually it takes time, right? It takes time to capture the trading edge on the market. So if you have time, of course, you can stick to the chart for a couple of hours and keep watching the market take movements like this in 5 or 15 minute chart. But usually we are busy. We're busy. We have other things to do. Of course, I have other things to do. And I check charts usually um, Usually for myself, I check charts uh, maybe like one hour and that's it. In the morning, I check out the charts uh, between 15 to 30 minutes and that, that, that will be it for, for looking at the chart in the morning. And I do my own thing in the evening, right? And yeah, yeah, after, after I... I do my own thing and after I come back to the chart on the evening time, I look at the chart again and probably analyze like 30 minutes or 40 minutes and that's it, usually, usually. Uh, but right now I'm doing this live stream so I check charts more than that, of course, because I am also checking charts, right? I am doing this live stream but at the same time I am also looking at these charts and analyzing and I am also looking for the buy chance or sell chance by doing this. So yeah, this is what I do. This is what I do. But yeah, um, usually, right, usually when I'm alone and when I was not really doing this live stream, I was only looking at the chart 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon and that, that would be it. That's it. And if I don't see any trade chance, then I just forget about it. Maybe I, I come back to the chart uh, later part after I eat the dinner or after uh, I do something outside. I will check chart at night, but that will be it basically. So, and why I do this is because it's very time efficient because I I can do other things, right? I can read books, I can take my dog for a walk, I can have fun with my friends by doing that. So yeah, yeah. To be a pro trader and to be a full-time trader, you, you don't have to see the chart 24 hours. But yeah, to me, to be a pro trader, you're right, uh, this is the only job that I do. And that's why I call myself a pro trader. So yeah, I say time efficiency like every time, like almost every time I do this live, live stream, I say time efficiency is important and that's because um, you know no matter how many hours you look at the chart you might not gonna be able to find the trading edge on the market but when you find when you see the chart for five minutes and you see the chart and you find the trading edge and take a buy then you can still make profit with that so I think that uh, how long you look at the chart is not really important, but where to buy or where to sell, right? Um, how you can spot the trading edge is more important. And that's a coincidence, so, uh, you know, so to speak. That's, a, that's like a coincidence, right? Sometimes you happen to see your friends on the street or at, at the mall. You happen, you happen to see your friends or somebody. And that's a coincidence, right? So I see myself as a flex, as a, like a coincidence. Uh, whenever I open up a chart, I look for I look for the encounter, right? I look for the coincidence. Where the coincidence happening, right? Where's my friends? <laughs> Where are they? And if I don't find them, then I will just leave that mall and look. Come back to the mall maybe five hours later or six hours later and look around for like, like thirty minutes and see if my friends are still there, right? And if I don't see them, then I will come back to the mall next day. Like that, I I see the chart like that, and I take, uh, yeah, I I see the trading like full time trading is like that. So, yeah, that's why I don't really look at the chart all day long. So yeah, <laughs> that was my little bit of a story. I have a stock that has three dojis on the daily time frame, which 
uh, with each doji just slightly lower than the previous. Does this mean it's bearish, biased, or still neutral? Um, yeah, when you see three consecutive dojis in a daily, right, that's very significant, very significant. Um, yeah, when you see the three dojis slightly significant, uh, slightly lower than the previous, that means it's bearish, it's bearish. So yeah, when you see the price to be breaking the recent low downwards, that will be a sell chance. Which time frame do you prefer to trade? I mostly go with daily time frame, shows a really clear picture of what's happening overall. Yeah, daily chart as a, as a bigger time frame and I take, I look at, well basically I look at three multiple time frames. So here is my formula here. Let's see if this is shown. Yeah, this is my formula here. So I take monthly chart Usually in the beginning of the month, I t look at the monthly chart, but usually I look at the weekly and daily as a bigger time frame to capture the major trend direction. And then I come down, and when I see the uh, trend direction in the market, then I come down to the middle time frame, which are a 4 hour, 1 hour, or 30 minute time frame to confirm whether the market is still on a trend, right? Steady trend. I check these middle time frames and then when the direction of the major trend and also the direction of this middle time frame is pointing the same way, then I come down to the 15 or 5 and is good trade, right? I look for the trading edge on the market by looking at these smaller time frames. So to capture the bigger time frame or to capture the major market momentum, you better take daily or weekly. If you want to be, uh, if you are a swing trader, day to swing trader. Yep. Okay. EuroGP 5 minute, it's a morning star pattern. Means a bullish buy. But uh, now we are trading with Ichimoku turn confirmation. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a morning star. Yeah, but we'll see, we'll see. So, yeah. So, yeah, really, right now Ichimoku is not really working. So, I'm showing Ichimoku because this is Ichimoku live stream. So, I am always showing Ichimoku. I don't switch around the indicators. But in this case, you better look at the price action to take trades, to buy, right? To buy. So, yeah, when you see the morning star like this, you can be confident to buy or you can look for the breakout of the recent high upwards. Uh, right now, the, there's a thrust up here, right? Uh, three consecutive uh, bullish candles thrust up here. This is a very strong signal of the beginning of uh, bullish momentum. And one thing is that uh, you can look at the Kairi here, right? There is uh, 10 pips away from this Kijun Sen. And previously there was, uh, it was 7 or 8 pips of, um, pips of away from this Kijun Sen, right? So right now the price is on the Kijun Sen. So when it goes up, it might go up to like 10 pips away. So yeah, that will be one of the scenario. So if it goes up like this, and if it stops it, and if it might reverse back, backwards, then you have to still wait for the buy. But if the price keeps going up and down above this Kijun Sen, that that would mean that the price is going to be breaking this recent upper recent uh, high anytime soon. So yeah, you can check the momentum like this. Um, when you see when first of all when the the Kijun Sen should be horizontal and Kumo should be horizontal, right? And when you see the market like this, this is how I actually trade with 
within the range by Ichimoku. But uh, when you see a range situation like this, first of all, you look at the Kijun Sen, right? You take the Kijun Sen and you check how many pips the, uh, the price is away. The price is 10 stars away from the Kijun Sen. This was 8, eight pips and this was 10 pips, right? So if the market continues to be in the range, most likely the market will be going up and down between the uh, through the Kijun Sen, right? The market will be going up and down 10 pips each side, on each side. But when the market start to prepare to be breaking it upwards or downwards, usually the price stays above the Kijun Sen. And then finally, it's going to break it upwards. It doesn't come back to Kijun Sen. It doesn't break the Kijun Sen downwards anymore. So this is how you can actually check where when the market is going to be breaking out by looking at the Kijun Sen. But make sure that Kumo is horizontal at that time. So like when Kumo is moving down, of course, the price can be below Kijun Sen, right? Right below Kijun Sen here. And right here too, below Kijun Sen, it doesn't mean anything here. But when Kumo is horizontal, Kijun Sen works to actually capture the potential uh, range breakout. So, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so I will be ending the live for now. Okay. Because I wanted to read a book from now. I have a book, new book right now, and I want to read it within today, tonight, before I go to bed. So I will be stopping the live. But yeah, thank you for your participation as always. I really appreciate your support. And please press a good button before you leave if you liked today's live. And please subscribe if you have any, uh, if you want to join my another live. Alright, so I will be doing another live tomorrow and tomorrow I will be doing the closed membership live again, the second one. So I will see you there and until then, stay gold and have a good day. Bye for now. Matane. I will just put the stay gold sticker here. Alright, see you guys. Bye.